That's right. We're making progress. Hello. Happy Wealth Building Tuesday. Good afternoon. This look is called Caffeinated Mama Bear CEO. Yes. Welcome to the party. Welcome to Overachiever Central, founded by yours truly, Dana Cadena, brought to you for Lifestyle International Realty and esteemed guests who are also joining us. We have 82 agent entrepreneurs in the Zoom room currently and growing. Thank you for putting the investment of your time within yourself today, here, tonight. Let's get it. Firstly, I'm going to open up with reading something just to start us off from this here little book. It's called You Squared. It's by Dr. Price Pritchett. And it's essentially a high velocity formula for multiplying your personal effectiveness in quantum leaps. Mm. I'm gonna run that back. It's like a rewind by Dr. Price Pritchett. It's a whopping nine bucks on Amazon. He is so welcome. U squared, it's a very little book and it's all about a high velocity formula for multiplying your personal effectiveness in quantum leaps. So story time, just for about 71 seconds. If you're okay with that, say okay in the chat, all right? And so we're gonna talk about going with the end in mind. Oh, I thank you for paying attention. Look at this interaction and engagement. We're going with the end in mind, right? So when you get into your vehicle and you choose to go somewhere, you don't say, let's just go somewhere, right? You put a specific address into your GPS. Our businesses are exactly like that especially in real estate, right? Our calendars are exactly like that. If you don't tell your time where to go, your calendar will run you instead of you running your calendar. Guess what? If you don't tell your money where to go, your money is just going to end up anywhere, right? Or right. There's a choice, sort of. And so when we focus with the end in mind, Dr. Price Pritchett calls it focus on the ends rather than the means. All right, for the next 71 seconds, pay close attention. Focus on the ends rather than means. You don't have to know how you're going to get there. However, you do need to know where you want to go. It is crucial to have a crystal clear picture of what you want to accomplish. Operate with a sharply defined mental image of the outcome you truly seek. Steer your attention on that very spot where you are to land at the end of your quantum leap. Visualize your arrival. When you do that, it's like you magnetize yourself to the ways and means involved in the methodology to get there. The solutions begin to appear. The answers come to you. If you start worrying about everything that will be involved in getting from here to there, you are bound to bog down in the questions about the methodology. People always get hung up on the how-to aspects regarding a quantum leap. The key is to not get in your own way. Hmm. I know I'm talking to somebody today. And so focus on the ends rather than the means. This is from U squared. So simple, so direct, right? 
if I'm speaking to someone, tell just put me in the chat. Because the reality is you don't have to know all of the details of the staircase in order to take one intentional step at a time. Big facts, triple facts. Maurice is on here from Rahway and Florida as it were, right? Triple facts. And so just like we are what we eat, we are what we think. Our greatest asset is the manner in which we conduct our mindset, how we think, what we think, what we tell each other. Congratulations, we just hit 111 agent entrepreneurs in the Zoom room. I should have brushed my hair today. No one told me. Huh. And so just like you are what you eat, you are what you think. Let's go with intentionality. The Mastery Series, every Tuesday in September. Oh, if you missed last Tuesday, the good news is it's now available on the LIR1 app. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And so last Tuesday, to do a brief wrap up, we dug deep. If you were here last Tuesday, put something in the chat about what you heard from the 101 ways to identify new clients in this season. And so last Tuesday was all about intentionality and the specificity of our focus. Say that 10 times fast, all right? And so we took a look at the GPA the goal priority strategies on one sheet of paper, how to do a business plan. That's on the app too, the LIR1 app. And then we inserted 101 ideas on how to identify new clients. And then we kind of circled it in with some behavioral styles. So again, that recording is on the app. Now today, today matters. We are going to dig very deep into how we are marketing in two ways, how we're personally marketing ourselves and then how we're professionally marketing ourselves. And to understand that there's an intersection there and that's normal and customary, we are not realtor robots, we are human beings and we're permitted to have right interests and and passions and things and a life yeah and as a realtor especially with the upper echelon of lifestyle international realty we know that we're the face of the company mm. it's pumpkin season sorry i'm in new jersey just saying and so we know that being the face of a company, there's a responsibility there. Because when you put your branding out there with the overall brand of the brokerage, you are representing an extension of that platform, of that organization, all right? Thank you for the engagement. Sandra, you took away networking from last week's segment. Oh, Aaliyah, the gratitude note, so good, right? The suggestions for the meetups, meetup.com. You'll be the only realtor hanging out with the investors. And so let's dig into it. Of course we have a slide deck. Of course we do. I'm so proud. Overachiever Central just turned 10 years old. It's in the fifth grade, adorable. Overachiever Central is a place for self-employed professionals to tap into models, tools, systems, regimens, and really develop habits that will get them from where they are to where they're truly purposed to be. 
And so it just turned 10 because I launched it in the summer of 2013. And so it's training, it's coaching. There's an intersection there as well. And the reality is, here's the bottom line. If, if you are like me and you come from humble beginnings and you don't come from a wealthy family, let's have that wealthy family come from you. Yes? Let's do it. So tonight, the investment of our time, we're on a date. We have about an hour of content. And then at 7, 16 p.m., I'm going to open it up for an AMA. Ask me anything. I'm an open book. You could really ask me anything. You could ask me anything about real estate would be cool, right? And so let's dig into the topic. All about marketing, the do's, the don'ts a hyper touch plan. We're casting light on what mega agents do to generate GCI, what mega agents do in personal and professional branding. If everybody's ready for it, just in the chat, say yes. Just so I know you're awake. Oh, snap. We just hit 131 friends in the Zoom room. Let's invest a moment for a personal assessment, all right? Because we want to understand where we are today to further define and articulate where we're purposed to go. So the first question is, what is your goal or target? Because sometimes when you aim for a target, you actually hit it. What is your goal for closed transactions in the next year. So that between today being September 12, 2023 and September of 2024, how many families would you have to serve? Let's say that a little differently. I have to get back in here and look at you again. And so how many families would you have to serve in real estate who either purchased with you or sold with you or invested with you or rented with you? How many families would you have to serve in order to feel proud of your real estate career, of your real estate business, however you may embrace it? Because it's not just about the transactions or the units. It is fulfilling to hand those keys, right? To really hand the keys at the end of the day, the bank put 80 to 90% down or more, right? And then if the buyer or homeowner doesn't feel like living there anymore, they could insert a tenant to pay the asset off. So the bank bought you the property. Someone else gets to live in a great place and pays off your asset. And this asset matures and creates money and cash flow for you over time. Welcome to real estate, the more you know. So some answers in the chat box, 35 minimum sales for the year, 50, nice, right? Two to four a month, I dig it. Listen, 24 to 48 units a year, Gucci. <laughs> Y'all taught me that in, in uh, Miami, actually. Gucci, so cute. You would feel fulfilled with two to three closings a month. The stretch goal is 50, done. 24 to 48, perfect. 30 families, amazing. 50 to feel proud. It hits different, right? I'm not disciplined. I'm very devoted. I'm not going to die on the treadmill, right? But I'm devoted enough to get on it. Owe me 25, nice. Oh, you're going to hit that with a bat. Is that 25 a month? It's It's cousin Dana after dark. Shara, 50, boom, nice. All right, so how many families do you have to serve, right, in order to feel proud? And listen, profitable, we have a financial integrity in our household. Somebody say financial integrity, all right? And so question number two, if your transaction goal is more than you've achieved in the past year, 
right, is more than you've achieved in the past, what will you do with the extra money? You can put that in the chat. Where are we going? Take me with you. Is it a vacation, right? Is it a down payment on another investment property, right? Are you spinning the extra profits back into your business to blow it up like we knew you would? Is it college tuition, right? My godchildren get the fob to a Tessie if they get straight A's in high school for four years straight A's? Come on, at least a model Y. Debt payment, right? Get rid of bad debt. There's healthy debt and then there's bad debt. Let's identify that. What are you doing with the extra 10K a month, 10K a quarter? Whatever your target is, there's zero judgment around it. I don't care if you're looking to have 12 families served, whatever that is, it is, and that's okay. Number three, who? It's like an owl, who? Who holds you accountable? All that means is who is holding you able to do what you said you were going to do. If my connectivity gets funny, just put it in the chat box or geo text me, all right? Who holds you accountable? Is it a mentor figure? Is it a coach? You know what's funny? If you're going to take that extra money and let's say do a family vacation, no one will hold you accountable better than a toddler. If you have a toddler in your orbit, if you're a mama bear, papa bear, auntie, godmother, godfather, whatever, you tell a toddler, when I hit my business goal, we're going to Disney or we're going to Legoland or we're going to Reykjavik, Iceland, wherever it is, that toddler will hold you accountable. I'm halfway being funny, halfway not. Who in your world is checking in with you has a cadence, is showing up on your calendar to make sure you're doing the things that are going to impact your world financially moving forward, right? Now, here's the million dollar question. If a young person looking to you, you the realtor, if a young person looking to you as a real estate professional had to get an A plus in lead generation, what would you suggest they do? And then are you doing that? So the last question here, the fourth question is, how many hours do you spend lead generating? I'm just saying, it's professional medicine. And all lead generating is, Connecting with adults who are in a decision-making process about real estate to show up as the answer to their real estate prayers. All right, so to recap, what's your goal moving forward for the next year? Threw that in the chat box, right? If your transaction goal is higher than it was previously, dream about, write it down, what are you doing with that extra money? right? And who currently holds you accountable? Is it a coach? Is it a mentor? Who is it? The who? And then lastly, how many hours do you spend every work day, every work week, identifying people to move forward in real estate because we are all independent contractors. And if you made zero efforts to connect with new people this work week, as a self-employed person, you just fired yourself. You could go ahead and fight me in the chat box if you want. Don't give your self-employed self a pink slip. This is Cousin Dana after dark. All right, next. Let's get into item number next. I got a love PowerPoint. And so we're going to look at what impacts our focus, right? And then we're going to go into the do's and don'ts of marketing. I had to stop here though, because we all have an opportunity 
to assess where we are today. Because where we are today does not necessarily have to define where we are tomorrow or next month or next quarter, certainly next year. And so I want to invite everyone here to take a look. If you're driving, do not look. <laughs> we are going to have this PowerPoint deck, no big deal. I will usher us through the seven circles. These are the seven circles of how life shows up. The first one, I'm just gonna start at about 10 o'clock here with finances. Money is not everything. However, I dare you to have fun without it. Right or right. So in your finances sector of your world, think to yourself, what is the one thing that you can do such that by doing it, everything else is easy or irrelevant? When you commit to that one thing in finances, everything else is easy or unnecessary. If you don't have a household budget, that would be a one thing example. If you're not tracking, hold on, I have to get out of the screen share for just a hot second. If you are not tracking your net worth, start today. It's literally what you owe out liability wise, and then what you own asset wise, and then do the math. Are you in the black? Always bet on black, by the way. Are you in the black or not? And just know to thy known self be true. It is very telling over time how quickly, especially in real estate, how quickly that can evolve. I'm putting it in the chat box. Track your net worth, all right? Make me a pinky swear promise because that matters. There is no other asset class that drives more wealth to households and to families in the world than real estate. So welcome to the right platform. What is the one thing in your finances? Next, business. We're just gonna go from like, I don't know, 10 to eight, all right? For business, what is the one thing you could commit to in your business that makes everything else evaporate or unnecessary? Where can you be more intentional? Where is the commitment? Do you need to clean your calendar up? Does your schedule run you or are you running that schedule? Right? Oh, baby. And so someone put in the chat box, what's the one thing you can do for your business? I'm going to put the one thing I can do. Hire marketing talent. That's who I'm looking for. Look, I'm participating. I'm doing the homework too. By the way, I do want to mention, I am still in these streets, marketing properties, taking listings, selling on the buy side. I don't always see the properties. But I'm, I'm negotiating on them and selling them because I succeed through a lot of other agents who do look at the inventory. Thank you, prospect more. I dig it. Holla. Oh, I love that. Hiring in-house social media manager. I'm so grateful for GCB. George Canciobello just hired. Woo, Chino. He just hired an amazing social media manager. It matters. Because if we're not marketing our story, someone else is or... We're just not getting up to bat enough, right? Like we're not telling our story the manner in which it should be told. Yes, Dwayne, that's actually the answer to connect with more consumers and to lead generate more. I love that. Thank you for mentioning that. And FH, that's a very unique name, but yes, more, more calling. That's the fastest way to connect with people. Calling, texting via phone. 
right? Jennifer says, get a VA. VAs have saved my world. Geo, high five it out in the chat box. Love it. All of these things matter. The next circle, right? We talked about business. We talked about finances. Next on the bottom, it says for my job. So I'm going to put air quotes around that because, you know, we're self-employed professionals. Let's just say for our role, whatever your role is, are you a mega agent team owner? Are you a member of a team? Are you a solo agent? Maybe you're a dual career. You know, I started off as a part-time agent in the early 2000s. They just called us part-time. Now, fancy, dual career, D-U-A-L, dual career. I am not accentless. So what is the one thing you can do in your role? If you own a sales team, how could you better succeed through your team members? If you're a team member, how can you better own your DNA on some of the overall goals? Mm, I'm talking to somebody, right? So for your role, how can you show up as the per person you're purpose to be, right? How can you show up as a leader? Next circle for your key relationships. This is sort of like five o'clock-ish on the circle dial. How can you show up better for your key relationships? And I will tell you something I've seen in 24 years in sales, mortgages and real estate, it's all I know. Mortgages 11 years and then real estate for 18. The reality is you can make all the money in the world, but go home to an empty house, not a good time. Not a good time. And so the breakable crystal glass relationships are in the household first. And then you can go kill it in the business. Just my two cents. You could fight me. Right or right. Next for your personal life. Please have one. It's healthy to have interests outside of business, even outside of other people right? In your personal life, what's the one thing you can do so everything else is simple or irrelevant? What is the one thing in your personal life? And then physical. Your physical, you only have one place to live, which is ironic in real estate. You, We really do have one place to live. Take it from me. I lost 98 pounds in the last 12 months. Uh, sorry, I didn't lose them because I don't want to find them again. So I deleted 98 pounds in the last 11, 12 months. And the idea is to get healthier. We have a responsibility in our families to be healthy. And then last but not least, of course, spiritual, your spiritual life, right? What does that need to look like? So you're okay in your spiritual sense, If this was helpful, just put something in the chat box to let me know that that just revisiting, because a lot of us have read the book, right? We can give them a little shout out, the one thing. The reality is it's healthy to do an assessment, to meet yourself where you are. If you want, write down these seven circles and put a number from one to 10 to rate yourself. I'm a cynic and a native New Yorker. So even for my physical health, I'm going to put an eight out of 10. But listen, there's things like there's, we can all benefit from doing a real deal assessment. Only have one place to live. Remember that. Wow. We have 141 friends with us here. Pretty serious for Tuesday night. I'm just saying. Hmm. All right, here we go, folks. The top four do's and then the top four don'ts of social media marketing. We're going to call this phase one. All right. Stay tuned. But this is just ground level, simple phase one. Firstly, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be privately passionate about the hot buttons. All right. 
I'm not saying don't have an opinion. Have an opinion. However, just be mindful of the fact that as real estate professionals, we work with the general public. And it is literally impossible to not offend or please, as it were, 100% of your audience. So think of yourself as the realtor, the realtor professional. These are guidelines. Everyone here is an independent contractor, right? So there is nothing that's mandatory, just highly encouraged behavior, all right? And so to be privately passionate yet publicly neutral is typically a healthy combination. You know, earlier today I shared, I have had agents who may have a pseudonym, right? Like if you didn't know Sasha Fierce was actually Beyonce, how would you know that, right? So I have seen agents kind of, you just have to watch your likeness because you can't really change your face, okay? So I've had someone, right? Brian Smith call himself Breve Saccato. I mean, really, it's interesting. But the reality is when you're privately passionate and publicly neutral, you, you will encounter less static. Let's call it less static, okay? And most likely connect with more people. Number three, think. Please think before you post. These things, these smartphones, these iPhones, most of us have iPhones. And if you don't, go get an iPhone. I'm such an iPhone snob. And then sometimes it doesn't work like a phone. I wish it would all the time. Think before you post because these tools make it so easy to just reshare, right? Or at the, the keystroke, just to just think. It seems obvious, and yet what goes on is fascinating. Be authentic, right? So it might seem a little facetious. Oh, you're saying be publicly neutral, but then be authentic. Be authentic in that you have interests, right? I mean, I'm going to borrow someone's dog to go to the dog park because so many real estate deals are cut at the dog park is what I'm learning. I have all the allergies, so I can't actually own one. But what I hear, it's be authentic in, right? If you're really passionate about culinary arts, great, pepper that in, right? Post about that, but don't make that the only thing, but be authentic. Again, to thy known self be true. So the do's, be privately passionate, publicly neutral, think before you post and be authentic to experience the least amount of social media drama. Ah, the don'ts. The don'ts look like, please don't. Please don't have commission breath. All right, don't be basic. Don't say, Call me if you need to move and have that be the post. Don't, right, say, hire me for your real estate needs. We've talked about this a little bit before. The reality is, you know, tell me, tell me an awesome story, right? Show me, I don't know, if you, if you see someone, like, show me your toddlers who, who's holding a sign saying, my mom's the best realtor right? Or my, my, my uncle's the best realtor. So I don't know, make it fun. Again, that be authentic. Don't make every post just listed or just sold for heaven's sake. Show me an amazing infinity pool, right? Like show me, tell a story. I mean, out here we have some crazy weather. So in the snow, once I had a lockbox freeze on me, y'all don't have this problem in Florida and the Carolinas. Invite me. But look, there are so many stories that are so watchable. Just don't be basic. We're not basic. Don't forget your audience. Doing some of these videos and reels, it behooves you 
to act as though you're speaking to one person of your audience versus striving to talk to everybody, right? When you strive to just make it for everybody, it doesn't hit. It's not, it, the, that pasta doesn't stick to the wall. It's almost like identify your niche and pour into them. But do not forget your audience. Thirdly, don't overestimate your audience. My nephew just taught this to me. My nephew has never been in real estate, right? I mean, he's a creative genius. And he's he's won the Latino Film Festival for small films. He's currently competing and, and, and involved in the Latino Film Festival for his film called Playing Sam. Shameless plug. And he'll show me other agents' videos and say, see that? She lost me in the first three seconds. Why? Because it, it's it's jargon. It's And the fourth point here is don't always use real estate jargon. That means our speak, MLS, right? It's the multiple listing system. It means watch using words like even referrals. What is that to a regular member of the general a referral? It's just, it's so awkward, y'all. It's an in, it's an introduction or a connection, an intro or a connection, right? Watch the real estate jargon. Even like use the Supra. Or, oh, sorry, the Supra's acting up, I was late. They don't know who who's, super, who's Superman. I, nobody knows really what these things are. And yet we work in the business, so we become a little desensitized to these terms. And so just watch what you put out there because it matters. Remember your audience, right? Don't overestimate their knowledge. Even I... I had a draft of a video recently talking about equity and I had my non real estate brain, amazing nephew say equity, like what, what? So we have to kind of calm it down to a normal panic and just make it more layman's terms. Everything we talk about, we have an opportunity to meet our audience where they are. If this is hitting while I'm talking to anyone in the room, please feel free to, to put it in the chat box and let me know. Right now in front of you, we have a 12 month marketing plan. Because if we fail to plan, well then we are planning to fall on our face or probably learn, but we don't really wanna go to Harvard, right? We'd rather have a polished marketing plan. And so the reality is always think about what is your method and then your message. How are you sending it out is the method. And then what is that message you're driving home? Think of solving a problem. We are solution creators. Say I'm a solution creator. I am a solution like Liam Neeson you know that actor, let me stop the screen share just for a second. You know that actor, he's gonna find that girl, Liam Neeson. That's why we get paid the big bucks at the closing because we know how to deal doctor. I call them the defibrillators, right? I'll bring out the real estate defibrillators. I will not let a transaction die if I can help it. Imagine the growth you can have if you actually talk and follow up with your past clients and the members of your data bank. Shout out to Erin Downs, partner, Rainmaker, mega agent, stunning creature. Thank you for sharing that. It's true. You have a data bank because when you deposit enough client info into that data bank, you can withdraw GCI from it. Oh, snap. Hey, Amelia, takes one to know one. 
Real recognizes real. Mm -mm. 100%. And so with intentionality, let's insert the plan. Agreed. Jimmy Joseph, what a cool name. I dig it. And so let's just take a 30,000 foot view upon a sample template plan. The idea is to, again, articulate the method, the message, and make it like a informational yet entertaining as well. It's like a delicate grapple balance of inserting fun with the data and then allow that data to create the decisions with your guidance. Make the smart decision by aligning and hiring you as their realtor, as their real estate advisor, as their realtor economist. We have a great opportunity to raise the bar here. And so this looks like 36 ways to touch or communicate with the people who know you, love you, like you, as well as other outside unmet general audiences as well. All right. So we have the 12 months here. And so let's just take the first month, right? We have January, obviously new year, new me, new numbers, right? Everyone's new, new, new <laughs> in the new year. Ride that out. Why not? Okay, you typically have an event to promote at the top of the year, right? You have a great excuse to, to really just celebrate the new year. Maybe you have a client appreciation event. Perhaps that can look like the, the first quarterly event. It may be hybrid, both in person and synthesized digital. The show rate when you have a digital access is great. We have 135 agent entrepreneurs in the room right now, right? You didn't have to park. <laughs> you didn't have to do traffic, right? You just digitally sign in. And people crave fun and being places, thank goodness, right? The invitation to the event itself is a bona fide touch. So think, how are you inviting them? Is it a mix of text, DM, US mail, email, digitized, like all of the ways so that your show rate is strong. And then how are you memorializing that? Are you hiring a photographer? Perhaps the photographer that does your property photography would be great to insert into a client event. You can also, in a compliant fashion, collaborate with other vendors on this. And so when you think about the calls and the invites and driving people to it. Did we just lose power? <laughs> really? Oh my God. Somebody put in the chat box, if you're still here, I think I'm losing electricity. Put in the chat box, if you're still here, because it looks like I'm frozen. Still here. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. <gasps> Did you see the lights flicker? Oh my gosh, thank God. Okay, here. Okay. Thank goodness for the chat box. Geo, Chris Delgado says the chat box is disabled. Send help. Okay, we're rolling through this. There's no lights though. I don't understand. You can still hear and see. Okay. You're not frozen. Okay. Thank you, Francis. All right. Let's keep going. I just don't understand. I literally have no lights in my home office right now. Okay. February, monthly mailer. Here in the Northeast, we have winter. Newsletters, face-to-face -face interviews. Okay. Thank you, sis. I see you, Joanne. Keep going. Okay. You can still hear me. I have no... 
March, listen, March Monthly Madness, apparently that's the orange ball. It's a basketball. Roll with it. This body was made by the debate team and spelling bees. I really don't know about sports, but the reality is there are seasonal sports that people are super passionate about. We glazed over February. Apparently in February, there is a major football game in February. Okay. I think it's called the Super Bowl. It sounds delicious like soup. All right. So think of the sports anchor. Maybe you make a couple of themed events that are centered around the sports. You can have amazing items of value as well, right? April in the spring, spring showers, right? Bring May flowers. The reality is there is a perception that the general public has that it's a great time to go on the market in the spring. The reality is when is a good time to go on the market? When the motivation of that homeowner or home buyer is optimal, right? I mean, some people have to move regardless of the market, the interest rates, the absorption rate, how many properties are available or not. The reality is that that timing, it's really based on the motivation of the general public. It's our role, though, to get in front of them. What are we doing in the month of May? That's a great time for that, you know, spring market update. Think about the quarterly updates. You're going to have this deck in the app. Geo, just make a note to add this deck to the LIR1 app and or company-wide email with the attachment, whatever is going to flow better because it is a very large file. As we slide into summer, right, you have everything from the synergy of a summer market, sometimes the rush to get in before school starts. Think seasonality and hitch your wagon to the seasonality of the business. All right. In July and August, again, usually hot months for us, right? Turning up the heat in the market. You want some face-to-face -face events. Think what bridal shows are you showing up at as the sponsored realtor vendor, okay? The monthly, as, as we roll into seasonality in the fall, you have an opportunity to give items of value. And an item of value, I mean, it could be anything from, I mean, just go even just general, like from a chip clip, right? To a phone charger, to there's so many different items of value, even a branded pen, I'm the nerd that collects pens. It's really, it's a habit. I have a problem. I love pens. I have all kinds of pens. Uh, but think like, what is an item of value that speaks to your brand too? All right. Monthly mailers in November. I'm here to tell you that gratitude message is tremendous because your competition is not doing the November gratitude message. They're not. Even just to dial back for a moment, October. October, you have Halloween, right? All of my homeowner clients are giving away some sort of candy wrapped something with my branding on it. Oh, our results are so scary. Please don't unfriend me. It is what it is. They're handing out my marketing. Why not? All right. November, we talked about. We have personal touches. Listen, December, here's the reality. Today is September 12th. In the month, in these last months we have of the year, September, October, November, you're creating the beauty of momentum in your business moving forward. You're creating momentum for the holiday season today. You're creating your momentum for what could be your best year yet in 2024 right now is game time right now. Mm, cousin Dana after dark. Cousin Dana after dark. I want to share with you what really incredible mega agent, partner, owner operators hailing from Hudson County, New Jersey. That would be specifically the Downs group. 
they have loaned this piece of genius to us this evening. This is how coffee, literally one cup of coffee, you're looking at the post here, keeps giving back. So we're dialing it back to the year 2016 and how one post about a cup of coffee at a local business by Russ, JC is my city. You could go ahead and follow him on the Instagram. One cup of coffee, this post, this photo resulted in the local business owner of that coffee shop referring multiple, and I mean multiple clients to them that same year, adding up to more than 75,000 bucks in commissions closed and sold. I'm going to get out of the screen share for a second. Listen closely. When you take your real estate brand and yourself and you tattoo your local footprint, your local community with what you bring to the world with your real estate genius, when you do cool things like sponsor the Wi-Fi for a few months with Leslie is my realtor as the password, when you just figure out creative ways to insert yourself into that small business that's in your area, magic happens. I'm also going to shout out locals only. We're going to get into that in a minute. So fast forward to the year 2023 on the screen share, I'm sharing with you how they sold a condo in a building with six units. This is Northern New Jersey, all right? After they closed, they dropped off handwritten thank you cards to the remaining five units saying, hey, thank you, right? They had an open house. There was a lot of activity there. So they were just thanking the neighbors, hey, your neighbor retained us to successfully sell their property. It closed. Here's the $10 Dulce de Leche coffee gift card. And they left it for each of those five units at their doors, thanking them for their cooperation and their patience with the open house that they did and all the traffic and the footwork in the building. That resulted in one of those five owners calling to thank them for his local cup of coffee. And after meeting with that homeowner a week later, they listed and sold his property 13K in additional GCI. That would be gross commission income. Somebody say yes. Oh my goodness. It's, listen, it's not easy or everybody, everybody would do it. It is utterly simple though. Respectfully, we are not splitting atoms. We're not, but we are in the people business and how we show up matters. Isn't this brilliant? Somebody give Russ and Aaron a high five. And so real quick, I'm going to cast light. You could go on YouTube and look it up. Locals only. Locals only was, I think, one of the most creative ways to really spin and turn lemons into lemonade. And uh, at the onset of, of the pandemic in the spring of 2020, everybody was pretty bored, right? Everybody was fairly, fairly bored, you know, home in the house and you're in the house bored. I think that went viral. That was like a song. And they, Russ and Aaron to their genius started essentially this the series of posts a campaign as it were and it was called where are you tripping it was a double entendre obviously because it was like everybody was tripping everybody was tripping because we were just tripping and they started to act as though they were literally traveling to different places to different places and the reality is you really can't make this. In fact, when COVID hit and you would be on a Zoom, remember the CNN, the CNN news anchor that had their kids show up? You cannot make this up. And so they started acting like they were traveling, right? They would be driving locally in New Jersey, acting like they were on the water at the French Riviera. They were not. 
people were believing they actually got out of the country and said, of course, Aaron and Russ would figure out how to get an overseas flight somewhere when everyone's locked down and they got all these DMs. How did you, where did you go? How did you get, how did you get out? And fascinating. So the question is, how can you bring your genius, your creativity and just make it fun and watchable? I had to give them a shout out. So to steer back to Locals Only, Locals Only is essentially a campaign where you connect with local business owners in your area, where you work, where you live, where you actively sell real estate and invite them to cast light on their meaningful business, just like you cast light in your business. All right. Thank you, Karina. I see you. You saw what just happened there, right? Okay. And so who in your local area is self-employed that you can connect with and literally create a revolving door of referrals, a co-marketing agreement. Who are you in alignment with, right? I love that, Russ, is in the chat box sharing how connecting with your local community, it will change your business. It's you have to make the commitment and sometimes be the leader to show up for them. I have agent entrepreneurs who have adopted the database of the local business owned by maybe, you know, senior, senior citizen who might not be so savvy at social media or but casting a light on, on their business and really just inserting some energy and intentionality and focus and some campaigns. You can then co-market to other people's database. It's a beautiful opportunity, right? And so moving forward, ask yourself, look inward, look inward and ask yourself, who can you identify in an area that you choose to market yourself and maybe sell more real estate, right? Because we know as agent entrepreneurs, the way to give ourselves a raise is to market to a higher price point, for example, right? Two and a half percent of 400K looks like 10K, which is fine. Two and a half percent of a million bucks looks different, right? 25 stacks, we'll take it. Okay. So the idea is how can you then pour in and show up in that community and invite others to do good? Because people want to generally do good in the world. They don't always have the time or focus for it. Are you collecting for the local food bank Maybe it's in your branded real estate reusable bags, for example. But you know, how are you driving giving back and giving in general into your community? Oh, baby. All right, we're going to jump back into the slide deck. That cup of coffee, man, that cup of coffee was worth it. It's the gift that keeps on giving. All right, so just like we are what we eat, we are what we think. And so this is just two quick podcast recommendations. Do me a favor, your favorite podcast, two or three of them, throw it in the chat box. Tell me, what are you listening to? The recommended podcast list for me for this season right now is between Win Make Give and Empire Building. Really appreciate those. And then when we look at what we're reading, these are some classics just to share with the room. We're about to open it up. Get your thoughts, get your takeaways and ask me anything questions ready. We're gonna open up the ask me anything segment in literally less than six minutes. This recommended book list, for example, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Listen, Rob Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki, he you know, like them or love them or don't. The reality is that man came up with the cash flow quadrant that impacted how we think about money and how we actively earn money and then being on the right side of the quadrant and how we can receive money differently. A great person once said, pay me in equity. All right. And so Rich Dad, Poor Dad, phenomenal book to read and reread. Then you have, how about this? The Go-Givers Sell More by Bob Berg. 
such a great book. The bottom line is, you know, the Latin root word sell on actually means to give. So when you're in sales, you're giving, right? John Maxwell's Failing Forward, phenomenal book. Tools of Titans, it's crazy. It's super thick, all right? It can hold open a door. But it's just some really cool hacks of what a lot of high net worth people use to make their lives simpler. Go figure. Living Forward, really meaningful book. And then, oh my gosh, one of the favorites, this man, Freedom Ain't Free, all right? Jocko and uh, Leaf, Extreme Ownership. George also recommends this book. George Canciobello talks about this book often too. It's it's powerful. It's like owning your DNA on the results, do or die. Do or die. Really phenomenal, phenomenal books. Now, here's the ask. Before we open up the AMA, the Ask Me Anything, I'll limit it to four hallucinations today. I want to invite your thoughts, your takeaways, any questions, ask me anything. But before we do that, there's over 111 people in the Zoom room. Please hover over this QR code, all right, and go ahead and give me feedback, whatever it is. Tell me, I should have combed my hair today. You like the blue light glasses? You don't, I don't know. Maybe the earrings are too funky, I don't know. But if you had something to contribute, if there's a topic burning that you'd love to hear more on, give us the feedback because we're curating, oh, I'm like a chef in the kitchen. The mastery series for October is undeniable content. Listen closely. The October Mastery Series is game over. How to build a profitable sales team. How to grow your team members. How to interview teams if you're thinking of jumping on one. How to grow from 101 to 121. How to crack seven figures of GCI how to grow into the person your purpose to be, the top seven habits of highly profitable mega agents, how to earn equity, how to own more, how to get paid differently, how to create dividend income. Listen to me. We are and we become what we repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is a habit. And the question is, what are the habits that you own? I want to own great habits. Do you? All right. Ask me anything. This is the ask me anything segment. Ask me anything. Unmute yourself. Put it in the chat box. I'm now back in the chat box. I'm going to catch up with it. Oh my goodness. I love this. Rant and gems millionaire mindset i know that's right real estate rookie oh we're gonna have a rookie of the year panel thank you viviana i see you i love the emojis in the chat box it's a fun time for me go ahead and ask me anything great question chelsea what walters chelsea walters what a great name so your question, oh, Lord of mercy, your question is what is your daily routine? And yes, you can allow, you can allow them to talk. So what is my daily routine? Well, mm, I will say my daily routine looks similar yet slightly different daily. Why? Because I own, I really own three different roles. I am a realtor broker, so I actively sell real estate. I transact. I also am a mastery trainer, right? And so I get to lead training and coaching resources for many, many amazing realtor professionals. I also am a general manager. So I get to work with the partners and the owners of amazing brokerages. So on the flip side, I have another you know, two roles is mama bear. Uh, my husband and I have two young kids, 12 and four. And I'm also, you know, a wife. And then I get, you know, I'm also allowed to be a person, right? Like not with a title. 
So essentially, right, and having a life and being mama bear and being wifey and being the GM and selling real estate as a realtor and then being a mastery trainer, owner of a training coaching platform, I believe in eight hours of sleep every night. Controversial. Don't unfriend me. I believe that for me, I require eight consecutive hours of sleep. And so sometimes, you know, that looks like 10 to six. Sometimes that looks like 11 to seven. And um, yeah, daily routine and business. I will say I get all my physical energy. I get my, you know, my kids like hugs and all of that good stuff. And the reality is I do the harder things first. So if there is uh, big rocks first, I'm going to front load my day and I'm going to front load my week. So early in the week and early in the day, those are the hardest things that I do. Sunday nights are always for planning. Sunday nights, I am planning the rest of my week so that I know exactly what I'm doing Monday through Friday. Although I address some work things on the weekends, I don't physically show up anymore. Disclaimer, I worked weekends for 11 years straight. I'm gonna run that back. I worked weekends for 11 years straight. So I did my weekend work. I do not work weekends anymore. I'm 24 years in the industry, 18 years in real estate, 11 years overlapped with mortgages. That is the cadence of my schedule. And any other specific questions that I may have left out about my daily schedule? I don't want to give you all the weeds of all the boring details, but What's most important goes early in the week, early in the day. And I put a bow on it on anything that's follow-up typically goes at the end of the day. Eat that frog. You know, that's right. Yes, you can win. Wait, who's asking for rookie of the year? Sean. I know that's not Sean. Ger Sean Gerald, you are not a rookie. No, no, you don't win rookie of the year. You're so funny. What are the effective... Oh, shower, shower, Arnold. What are effective ways of prospecting, honey? Honey, I want to get you home in time for midnight. Effective ways of prospecting. You're going to make me sit here and remix this until midnight. I want to invite you to go on the LIR1 app and invest the time. Fast forward about 20 minutes in. And in that next 20 minutes, listen to the 101 high yield ways to find clients and then text me. I'm putting my geo, put my name and cell number in the chat box. Text me your top two or three from that list of 101. Go in the app and watch 50 strategic ways to sign listings. That'll, you won't, you won't sleep until next Wednesday. It'll be great. Effective ways of prospecting, the fast answer, is do what your strengths are going to help you monetize so that you're doing what you do well in identifying new clients so that you enjoy the work. So if you're an in-person person, put your running shoes on and do public open houses and in-person networking events and business to business, B2B. Go on the app and watch Elevate Your Business. Uh, do what you do well. If you're a phone person, great. Pick up the 100-pound iPhone and make the calls. Get a Vulcan 7. Get the tools, Red X, whatever speaks to your local multiple listing system. But do what your strengths are going to complement to earn more business. Because it's earned, not given. Yay. Please raise your hands if you want to unmute and then Gio will unmute you. This is how the party works. Uh, quick question. Okay. Where do you get phone number lists and do cold calling without yeah, getting into legal problems? Yeah. Watch that do not call list. Right. And so what you want to do is really interrogate these third party platforms. Um, you want to go ahead and Firstly, ask your local mega agent at your branch what tools 
best work with and align with your local MLS. For example, in New Jersey, we have some multiple listing system platforms that work really well with a tool called Red X. It's R-E-D-E-X. It's something you can subscribe to. There's different plans. It's an auto dialer, for example. But then there's other areas where Vulcan 7 is so much better. Vulcan, it literally sounds like the, I think it's a cartoon, like Vulcan, V-U-L-C-A-N 7. So Vulcan 7 is another tool. I would just go with the end in mind. And, you know, my favorite proverb is be wary of the naked one offering you a shirt. Don't take the advice of someone who never used these tools in your local area. Go with the advice of someone who crushes it on the prospecting end in your local area firstly, okay? And then understand what that tool is and make sure that they that tool is compliant with scrubbing the do not call list, et cetera. Is that clear? If there's any more questions on that, oh my gosh, there's 19 more questions. This is great. And so that's on the tools. Yes, eat that frog. Question, yes, this is so good, Amelia. The question here is, were you ever too shy to door knock? And if so, how did you master it? Yes, I brought someone with me and it's really safer, I'll say, to kind of have like a tag team kind of buddy go with you to door knock. Yes. And so what it looks like is I, I would I would have another agent and I and we agreed that we will split any of the listings or buy sides that we generate together as we door knock. And we had a referral agreement around that, right? To document it. And so we would door knock. And sometimes we would just start to hysterically laugh just, just about the door knocking stories, okay? You develop these stories and then they develop you. I will say definitely no less than six figures of GCI from door knocking, so it works. But just be safe. And usually if you're too shy, just bring someone with you and you just have fun with it. Next question. What is the best way to find properties from wholesalers to specifically target investors? That way I can offer, I get it, portfolios to investors and be their go-to for investments. So for this, I feel like we have a great opportunity to cast light on a panel style conversations with champions kind of thing where I can invite the subject matter experts and literally Q and A them for wholesaling and targeting investors. I'm going to give you the fast answer of go with the expert in mind, right? Miguel Landsafe, Miami. He is, he is masterful at wholesaling and he wholesales some seven figure products. Just giving you a note during study hall on that. Jay is asking, what is the one thing you'd want us to remember. I would ask that you remember the answer is already within you. You are already whole. The question is, what are you going to do moving forward to impact and create generational wealth? And how are you going to make certain you're growing into the person that the world requires? The answer is already within you. Fair? No one's going to say it's not fair. How do you schedule? Great next question. It looks like Christ. I'm sure it's Christopher or let's see. Uh, yeah, Christopher Chow. Cool name. How do you schedule showings versus cold callings prospecting time? You eat the frog first. So your prospecting always comes first and then you book showings after that. Really simple. Sean Gerald, you are not a rookie. Sergio, Sergio Palmetto, amazing name. That's my son's name. So question from Sergio, if you had to hit the reset panel, what aspect of your business would you have done differently to be more successful today? Easy. I would have paid way more attention to growing my data bank from day one and following up with it so much more. Oh, it's like to have a time machine. And I would have purchased so much more real estate. It's not even funny. So don't wait to buy real estate. Just, you know, 
buy real estate and then wait. Let's do that class. I agree. Okay. Oh my gosh. These questions are awesome. So what are the most effective tools or apps you use to maximize your productivity? I follow my Google Calendar like nobody's business. It has evolved over time though, because I used to have a written paper book calendar and the Google Calendar. I have now been reformed and refined and converted to 100% that digital Google Calendar. And it sounds funny, I'm gonna show you the Reminder app. This app, I'm gonna darken my screen so you can see. This clock reminder, I mean, literally, it's, I mean, I don't know if everybody does this, but I have like reminders for my reminders in a way, as it were. Not really, sort of being facetious, sort of not. So if I have an appointment at one o'clock, I am having a message at 1215, 45 minutes until that appointment. If it's 30 minutes away at 1220, it's saying leave, leave for your one o'clock. If that one o'clock is supposed to be done at two, it's pinging me 150, wrap it up. Remember the wrap it up button? Oh, I'm going to show my age. Wrap it up. Okay. The wrap it up button. If you know what that is, put it in the chat box. Another tool. Oh, I want to get you home in time for midnight. Uh, another tool I will say, you know, another tool is in your iPhone setting when you're driving and someone texts you to put that auto reply of thanks for your text. I'm currently driving and will reply when I get to my destination, invaluable. Because no text is worth wrecking my dream vehicle. And most importantly, no text message is worth making your car into a casket. Amen? All right. Let's see what else now, uh, Cousin Dana After Dark. Thank you for adding these things to the chat box. The class list of the courses in the, in the Lifestyle app, how to find those courses. We're on the app. Gio, put the instructions in there again. I know you did it a little while ago, but just throw how to find the application, where the classes are in the list of classes, just again. Mojo, Mojo is a great tool. Red X and Mojo, M-O-J-O. -O. It's like your Mojo. Holla. Wow, there's still 97 of y'all here. I'm impressed because it's dinner time. I'm famished. Okay, Catherine. Catherine Alejo, beautiful name. You're saying I see many trainings on how to get numbers, information of owners and homes and encouraging people to cold call every single day. Is there a training on what we actually say? On a cold call, oh, Aaron, we should bring back Aaron Downs. We should bring back the, what we actually say, the scripts and dialogues and approaches class and session. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's the next one we need to record. So in the recordings on the training, I'm telling you right now on the app, there was a masterful class that Aaron Downs led on August 22nd at two o'clock. It was 8.22 at two. Why I remember these things, right? But it was really powerful. And Erin really dug into how she pre-qualifies and consults homeowner clients. I would say, start with that and stay tuned. Why don't I put a scripts and dialogue item on for October? Yay. Oh my gosh, just 30 more messages. That would be amazing, great. Who's asking Oscar Ocampo, another amazing name. If you have four to six months saved to pay bills, do you think it's time to jump in full time? I would say closer to the six month and then be like Nike and do it. I wouldn't tell you anything I didn't do. I did. I I had that, that six month mark and I just, because when you burn the boats, you have nowhere else to go. And a six month buffer in this industry, I believe in you. It's like the disclaimer, I believe in you, but uh, 
what do I know? So I say, what do I know? Just in case that advice messes up your life. I'm just kidding. But really, usually a rule of thumb, six months of liquid bills in the bank where you don't have access debit card wise, that should be a go. As long as your calendar is going to reflect the dollar productive activities of driving under contracts listings to your business. So you make that calendar commitment along with stacking up the six months of liquid total bills. That sounds like a solid plan. Fair. Thank you for your time. Lovely. Thank you for remembering that was Dave Chappelle. How did you, oh, here's a great question. DM, all good. How did you master or handle answering the hard questions from clients when selling and negotiating? That's a great question. I practiced and I did not practice on the general public. I practice my scripts and my dialogues and how to say and what to say with other agents who were also actively prospecting as well. From 8.30 in the morning until about 9.15 in the morning, every single day for six years, I practiced. I kid you not. I practiced to the point that I could not get it wrong. There's that part. I hope that answered the question. Do you mail out to only one specific area or repeatedly for a year and change it up? I feel like it's a great question, Johanna M. The reality is the commitment for me is 18 months at minimum on any geographic farm. And it also depends on the cadence or schedule of that mailer. That's a whole class within itself. I'm delighted to do a segment on that very soon because it's very timely. You have to make that long-term commitment. So whether it's, you know, 18, I prefer even more like 24 months, consecutive months to really go deep with any geographic mailer. If anything, I would add versus change it up because you don't want to lose momentum that you've created with any given group. Okay, that would be great. I'm just... Anyone? Okay, good. Ivan's looking for people to door knock in Miami. Check out Ivan Nunez. Oh my goodness, we're here for two more minutes. Uh, Wendy's asking, okay, what does your VA help you with most? Ugh, life. Okay, my virtual admin is like leader of leaders. He's here. His name is Gio. He's a genius. What does he help me with? So the original role that we're pivoting back to very fast is making talent agent realtor attraction calls. So he, uh, the original vision was to purposefully book me on 40 listing appointments every month, meaning in my world, growing the brokerage was 40 agent appointments every single month. And we choose which 12 to 15 to hire. He also happens to have a a, uh, graphic design background. So he's amazing at creating these digital pieces you see. He's just a genius of geniuses. And I wish he had a, a twin. Uh, good. Men, um, Manuel Sanchez is saying, Ivan, text me. Pay attention to the chat box. Oh my gosh. Do I have all the questions? I think I got to all the questions. Fantastic. Participate. Part this book is called Under Caffeinated. Amazing engagement and participation, y'all. For real, for real, over 90 people in the Zoom room. I am so delighted. Uh, I love how, oh my gosh, tax time. That's the most abusive uncle, right? Uncle Sam, go figure. Uh, definitely catch up on the chat box. Next week's Tuesday night segment is going to be populated in the chat box. What year is it? I'll tell you the next Tuesday night segment is all about growing your client base, sales, 101. And I'm going to throw some scripts in there because we need to do this. And don't forget, you want to be here next Tuesday because that's when we're rolling out the October Mastery Series, undeniable content, content that you have to register here to get. It's going to be fire, 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 fire. All right. Thank you for the investment of your time. That's that's our time. We're going to wrap, have an outstanding evening, show up like the person you need to be because somebody's going to do it. And I think it should be us. Dale. Have a great night, y'all. Thanks for tuning in.